within eight years. The number of medical doctors, nurses, and midwives in Borno State, Nigeria, was increased by 300%. Critical steps were deployed on medical education. Hospitals and clinics were rebuilt and equipped. with new ones built from scratch. Specialized life-saving medical equipment, which never existed, were brought and installed in the hospitals. All of these say emphatically that despite the Boko Haram crisis, Governor Kashim Shetima ably brought a sea change in driving Borno's healthcare system, from those days of pretense to these days of genuine service delivery. At the inception of his administration in May 2011, one of the earliest steps taken by Governor Kashim Shetima was the urgent need to equip some general hospitals and primary healthcare centers across the state which had structures but couldn't function efficiently due to the lack of basic medical equipment. Between 2011 and 2012, Governor Shetima's infant administration at that time was able to fully equip and commission 13 general hospitals in Konduga, Briel, Askira, Kalabalgi, Chibok, Gudumbali, Mafa, Dikwa, Kwayakusar, Biu, Marte, Magomeri, and Meduguri. The commissioning of these equipped hospitals mostly took place in 2012. Simultaneously, the administration saw the need to also equip 10 primary health care units in Koloram Marte, Uba, Askira, Mobbar, Ngala, Mongunu, Dikwa, Shani, Kwayakusar, and Biu, while additional health care centers in Gashingar, Fogwa, Jabulam, and Abadam were upgraded. Along the same line, the administration imported 34 ambulances from the United States of America. Some of them are mobile clinics with life-saving equipment and supplies. The governor also approved the introduction of human resource partnership, which required consultant medical doctors working with the University of Meduguri Teaching Hospital to use off days to diagnose patients in hospitals owned by Borno State Government. In 2013, however, the progress is being recorded by Governor Shetima were largely reversed when Boko Haram insurgents accelerated and extended attacks to local government areas. These attacks, which continued up till 2015, led to sovereign occupation and administrative control of 20 local government areas by the insurgents. Hospitals and primary health care centers already equipped and commissioned by Governor Kashim Shetima were destroyed by the insurgents during their occupation of local government areas such as Abadam, Dikwa, Mopar, Ngala, Mongunu, Kalabalgi, Konduga, Askiraoba, Magumeri, Dambua, and Marte. A 2016 recovery and peace building assessment conducted by the World Bank in collaboration with the European Union and the Nigerian government revealed in a comprehensive report that a total of 201 healthcare centers were destroyed by the Boko Haram before, during, and after their occupation of 20 local government areas in Borno State. In addition to destroying healthcare centers, the insurgents constituted fatal threats to health officials involved in immunization campaigns against killer diseases to save the lives of children and to some extent adults. Before disruption by Boko Haram, Borno State was identified amongst the most dedicated to primary health care services, especially in the prevention of dangerous ailments through aggressive immunization campaigns. From 2011, Governor Shetima had reactivated the state and local government's tax forces on immunization, and he appointed his now late Deputy Governor, Zanna Umar Mustafa, as coordinator of all immunization programs. The government was aggressive on polio eradication. The government was able to control outbreak of communicable and non-communicable diseases like Lassa fever, tuberculosis, cholera, 
Cerebro's final meningitis. The government re-established the Borno State Action Committee against AIDS with preventive and effective treatment responses to patients. Governor Kashim Shitima was regularly involved in majority immunization and healthcare awareness campaigns, as well as giving prompt approvals to other matters of preventive health care. Governor Shitima was at a point identified and honored by the Federal Ministry of Health as being one of Nigeria's three governors that had given the highest commitment to primary health care. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which makes intervention on primary health care in Nigeria and closely monitors dedication of states, also honored Governor Shitima in 2012 in recognition of his exceptional interest in preventive primary health care. There is this uh, Bill and Melinda Gates and the Nigerian Governors Forum leadership challenge that was thrown to all the governors to show their commitment and leadership toward immunization and primary health care services in their zones. Uh, His Excellency Governor Kashim Shatima won the award for the Northeast and, uh, and this is because of his continued commitment to ensure that uh, this agency and all line ministries associated with health are working toward achieving that goal. He's always on the neck of the traditional and religious leaders and also the local government chairman to ensure that they live up to their responsibilities in their different domain. And uh, through his interactions with his advocacy, we are having a good cooperation of the traditional leaders in Borno State, so much so that I think in northern Nigeria, this is one of the places where the working relationship between the traditional institutions and the primary health care service is very strong. And we have the least rejection of PAC services like immunization in the communities because of this singular effort that he has put to bring us together closely with the, with the religious and traditional leaders in Borno State. While all these happened, Boko Haram insurgents continued their evil attempts to derail the governor. Notwithstanding the distractions, Governor Kashim Shatima went ahead, deploying a combination of approaches in restoration and advancement efforts. Meanwhile, attacks on 20 local government areas by insurgents led to influx of over 1.5 million displaced persons to Meduguri. Among them were families who settled finally within Meduguri and Environs. The development drastically increased population in the state capital, and that implied more persons in potential need of public services, especially health care. Sunana Mohammed Musa Soe, Ni Dagabama, and Pitona Zona, and Sobo the crisis. Yo, Huna Kusande, Shekara, Hudu, and Yab, Zomunang, Amamun Zona, and Alhamdulillahi, Bamu Zana Hakaba, Mumpara Sanamu. Alhamdulillahi <laughs> yadda yake tafiya alhamdulillahi mun gode Allah muna cikin koshin lafiya kowa da kowa yana cikin walwala da faraha kowa yana jin dadi yadda yake zama nan da yake gunadar da kasuwancin sa to improve medical access to an increased population governor shatima focused on expanding and upgrading existing hospitals like the nursing home which was renamed general muhammad shua memorial hospital in meduguri as part of major changes to that hospital, a modern maternity complex was built and fully equipped. It was commissioned by the Vice President, Namadi Sambo, in 2013. At the existing specialist hospital also in the populated Meduguri, Governor Shetima approved the establishment of a kidney, dialysis and a radiodiagnostic complex. Specialized medical equipment like MRI machines, CT scans, mammograms, dialysis machines, x-rays, and ultrasounds with the latest technologies in accurate diagnosis were imported and installed. Similar medical technologies were installed at the existing Umarushiku Hospital in Bulungkutu. 
Governor Shetima approved the complete overhaul and upgrading of the General Hospital in Molai with new beddings and medical equipment. The Governor also approved the construction of new women and children hospital along Diko Road, named after Mariam Abacha. The 250-bed hospital is also equipped with the best medical technologies. The administration also introduced 24 hours power supply in urban hospitals with more traffic of patients. Hospitals in rural and suburban areas were equipped with solar power. This was a departure from previous years when hospitals operated in darkness with admitted patients relying on candles at night. 24 hour power supply in urban hospitals makes diagnosis with specialized medical equipment possible since most hospital equipment require power to function in both detection of ailments and treatments like surgeries. One of the policy drives of the government is to ensure that we're able to provide quality health services to our people. And it's not just about restoring the to destroyed health services and health facilities, but rebuild them better. Government is expending a lot of resources in terms of providing uh, money for people to access health services outside the state capital and even beyond the country and not everybody has the privilege to do that that's one of what has informed his excellency's decision to invest heavily in this particular structure and as we'll go around to see you realize that in this particular structure there's been a full component and like some people describe it this is fully a hospital within a hospital it has an ultra-modern accident and emergency unit where patients would easily be received in. But very importantly, it has a lot of radio diagnostic equipment ranging from simple X-ray, simple ultrasound scan, 2D, to advanced ultrasound scan, including 4D. The latest technology in ultrasonography, the latest technology in imaging, a 128 slice CT scan, which, by the way, is the first of its kind in northeastern Nigeria, and also a 1.5 Tesla MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is the first of its kind in this part of the world. Uh, our E10 ultrasound scan machine, it's the latest technology from GE. We have two, I'm sure you've probably seen one in one of the other hospitals, but it might interest you to know that that is a technology that is not found anywhere in West Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. It's, this is the first place where you find that. So, in order to mitigate this, to bring succor to the people, to bring better care, I mean, uh, delivery care to the people, this is probably the most driving force that has gotten the government to really invest in this. Outside the more populated state capital, Meduguri, the governor approved the overhaul and upgrading of different general hospitals. In total, the administration of Kashim Shitima has completely overhauled and expanded 18 general hospitals located in Dambua, Chibok, Konduga, Bama, Goza, Shani, Magumeri, Gubio, Damasak, Molai, Biu, Dikwa, Mafa, and Beni Sheikh. These are besides expansions and equipping of Umaru Shehu State Specialist and Muhammad Shua Hospitals in Meduguri. Of the 18 overhauled hospitals, 12 have so far been fully equipped, while the remaining six are being equipped. He has constructed a new general hospital in my domain, and the existing one was, uh, was renovated very well, and I was even directed to supervise the construction myself. And we have done it to the best of our ability and the, most of the, the hospital equipment we complain about were provided. So he has bring the health services closer to our, to our people. Besides complete overhaul of 18 general hospitals, Governor Kashim Shetima also approved the construction of seven new hospitals using a new prototype in Gongulong of Jere, Ngamdu in Kaga, Azare in Haul, Gajiram in Ganzai, Bargu in Shani, Jajeri in Meduguri, 
and Baga in Kukawa. Additionally, primary health care centers were raised to 656 by the administration of Governor Kashim Shetima. With the drastic increase in number of general hospitals and primary health care centers, it was clear to a well-educated Governor Kashim Shetima that there would have to be corresponding increase in number of medical doctors, especially given the population of the state. It is important to note that before the coming of Governor Shitima's administration in 2011, Borno, a state with a population of over 4 million people and a projection of 6 million, had only a total of 61 medical doctors attending to these millions of patients. Under Governor Shetima, the number of medical doctors has been raised from 61 to 213. All that happened with the recruitment of 152 medical doctors. Also, the administration met on ground 980 nurses and midwives employed by successive administrations. In a bold step, however, the administration of Governor Kashim Shetima employed 870 nurses and midwives and relatedly, the administration also employed 418 health workers with emphasis on pharmacists, radiographers, laboratory scientists and their support staff. The governor introduced welfare packages that include building of two estates for medical doctors as well as nurses and midwives, both in Meduguri. We've also been able to uh, delve into areas of human resource capacity development. And as we speak, this has been the major tertiary uh, hospital for the state. This centre has been upgraded and is now accredited as a postgraduate training centre. It is accredited by the West African College of Surgeons to provide residency training, at least in obstetrics and gynaecology. And very soon we're looking at how we're going to expand to uh, the disciplines of surgery and anesthesia, as well as uh, radiology. Beyond the employment, Governor Shetima sent 60 female citizens on an unprecedented government scholarship to study medicine and surgery in two recognized universities in Khartoum, Sudan. The ladies, who are now rounding up, are expected to add to the growing number of 230 medical doctors and to fill the gaps created by a low number of female doctors in the state. Governor Shetima had observed that low number of female doctors was affecting the health care of women perhaps due to moral and cultural values restraining women from freely discussing their reproductive and other intimate health issues with male doctors. Besides approving scholarship for medical studies abroad, Governor Kashim Shetima's administration upgraded Borno's two premier medical schools to colleges. For instance, the School of Nursing and Midwifery in Meduguri was upgraded to college after overhaul of infrastructures and other academic components. Similarly, the School of Health Technology, also in Meduguri, was upgraded to a college, also after government improved facilities and academic components. With their upgrade to colleges, limitations placed on schools in number of courses and admissions is now eliminated, thus creating opportunities for more citizens to get trained in nursing and midwifery, as well as in laboratory sciences which are important aspects in the provision of healthcare to citizens. What we did was, when we came on board and we saw the dearth of personnel and equipment, we had that compelling need to find a solution to it. What we did was, instead of bringing in intermediaries, we decided to take advantage of the government company relationship. That was how we had direct interface with GE, General Electric. That was how they gave us specification. And that was how we were able to set up the diagnostic center with CT scan, with all sorts of state-of-the-art facilities, mammogram machines, and so on. At a cost of less than 4 billion naira. If we are to contract it out, we might end up spending 7 billion naira. We have to come up with my... Mm, with, with ways, with means for the judicious utilization of those scarce resources. And one gentleman, Mr. Abdewakil Adisa, he is the owner of Matrix Petroleum, in his corporate social responsibility, we partnered with him. 
We played our own part of the bidding, and that was how the kidney dialysis center came into being. And with the burgeoning of the population of Maiduguri, from about 1.2 million to nearly 3 million, the health facilities were overstretched. And we had only three hospitals in Maiduguri by then. The Omori Show, the State Specialist Hospital, and the University of Maiduguri Teaching Hospital, which is a tertiary institution. Even the nursing home here was under lock and key. We had to fully upgrade the nursing home, republish it, rebuild it. We had to build another hospital at Bolorito. The Mariam Abacha Hospital, 250 bed hospital in Rwanzapi. Another hospital at Gongolo. And the Mule General Hospital. We have to upgrade it to the status of a state specialist hospital, all in an effort to meet the health needs of a very huge population. And I think, I think, I think we are doing well with all sense of humility. We have done well. It is the conclusion of majority of observers, including experts, healthcare experts, health-related associations, civil societies, and most importantly, the citizenry that under the nearly eight years of Governor Kashim Shetima, the healthcare system in Borno State has witnessed a turnaround of 360 degrees. The fact that this feat was recorded in spite of the Boko Haram challenges has definitely placed Governor Kashim Shetima in the league of great men who had clear visions and worked incredibly hard to actualize these visions for the health and well-being of the good people of Borno State.